I kind of saw a little bit of the color of yellow, and I scratched it back, and there it was. So some, some sign in some county is missing a yield sign, but it, it provided some shelter and, and protection for that mobile home. Hey, welcome back, everybody. In this session, we're going to be really kind of educating you guys a little bit more on your first deal. So in our first um, webinar, you saw you kind of, we kind of just scratched the surface of mobile home industry, what we've done, you know, the different marketplaces. But, you know, now you've got your interest and now you're looking at maybe going into your first mobile home deal. So Dan and I are just going to kind of walk you through a little bit of process that we go through personally for buying and selling mobile homes. So we're going to talk about two areas, okay? The first one is going to be the physical characteristics of mobile homes, okay? And the second is going to be the situations or the situational uh, areas of mobile homes because they're both very important and you can't step over either one of these. So uh, let's start with the, the, the preferred characteristics. So... Dan, why don't you start us off a little bit? All right. Well, the, one of the, when we are out looking for our sweet, sweetest deals, we're looking for homes that are a certain age or newer. Uh, 1995 or newer is really a good age that we focus zero in on. Now, we'll buy them a little bit older, but 1995 or newer is really, mm -hmm. those are really the hot ones. They obviously have to be for sale by owner. So we call yep. those FISBOs. Uh, if, if they're homes that are being sold by the park, you know, you really can't deal yeah. with those homes because you can't move them, you can't resell them. Uh, we want vinyl-sided, shingle-roofed homes, typically. Um, we like 14 by uh, 70s or 16 by 70s, you know, single-wides. Uh, you know, same with double-wides. Uh, three-bed, two-bath are, are the nuggets, the gold nuggets. Everybody yeah. likes three-bed, two-bath homes. Two-bed and, and two-bath are fine. Yeah. Two-bed, one-bath are okay, too, but... The sweet ones are three bed, two bath, uh, both in uh, singles and double wides. Yeah. And I would say one of the things you want to look for on these uh, singles is we really want to watch, um, you know, the roofs. That's a big deal, roofs, because if they're, it's the most expensive part on the home. And if it's really in poor condition, um, that can, you know, that can cause an issue. So, um, so physical characteristics, are, we just covered. Now we're going to look at situational. So, um, the first one you want to ask uh, the seller, uh, the owner, is can the home be moved? Because if it can't, you're, you, you could be looking at now going into a retail model, okay? Because we're, we're, these conversations are both for wholesale and for retail. But if it can't be moved, it kind of sticks you in one little category. And if you do, it's not a bad thing. It's just, you know, you don't have choices now, right? And so we always ask them one of the first questions, can the home be moved? All right. The second one is, do you have a clear title with no liens? What does a clear title mean? Clear title means that you own the title. All right. So in Michigan, it's a green title, just like our, our cars and our boats and all that. And, um, you know, it has the owner's names. It could be multiple names. You want to watch that. And really, you know, with no liens and on a title, every title in every state is going to have a section for a lien. And what that means is there's a lender, obviously. Could be um, 21st Mortgage, could be Triad, could be some bank in your local area or credit union. But you want to see that and verify and ask them what is the amount that they owe. Because if you're going to buy this thing, you got to know what's, what's their lien, right? Yep, absolutely. You know, I think one of the, the biggest, uh, most important things or pieces of information you want to garner from a seller is what is their reason for selling? Yeah, that is going to tell you whether or not the deal is going to be, uh, you know, workable or not. Yeah, so absolutely. What's the level of their motivation? So finding out the reason for their for selling are they did they just buy a new home, uh, and now they're they're going to may potentially be stuck with a second, you know, a mortgage and and a payment on this uh, mobile home. So finding out those reasons yeah. will really help. Um, we talked about roof condition. Yeah. Uh, general condition is something we can really go into more detail about. Um, but there's some other points here about highlights and problems, Dan. Yeah. So, you know, I, I want to go back to roofs just for a second because roofs is kind of critical. So Dan and I buy, have bought over 1,400 homes in our career, and sometimes we'll look at roofs, and, you know, they've got a few missing shingles, okay? 
So what does that mean? Just means some wind blew it off. Um, you know, there's no leaks. That's something we'll still entertain. Um, if you start to see the dog ear, uh, dog ear meaning it just it just looks like it's the breaking of the edges of the the shingles, and you see them curling up like you know potato chips. Those are the ones we you know we're going to raise our eyebrows on and look a lot closer, or we're just going to pass. If you see large areas that have been patched with tar and all that. Those are those are real questionable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. or sagging uh, decking that's, exactly, you know, that's, yeah. uh, that that would show in, or be indications that there's probably some leakage that's gone into this, you know, into the yep. attic space, which can create mold. So yeah, those are situations where we kind of go, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I bought a home one time, um, <laughs> and they actually used a yield sign on the roof, and they tarred it to the roof. And I got, I had to go up and look. And, and I probably still have a photo. If I can find it, I'll share it. But it was comical. I went up there and looked at it, and I kind of saw a little bit of the color of yellow, and I scratched it back, and there it was. So some, some sign in some county is missing a yield sign, but it, it provided some shelter and, and protection for that mobile home. So um, you might find unique things like that, too. Yeah, and a blue, a blue tarp <laughs> is really a, a flag of, oh, my gosh, I yeah. think we need to be uh, moving along here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, now on that point, roof condition, uh, we bought homes before that actually had leaks in one area. Now, you got to be specific. You know, you got to go look at it because we paid a guy, a contractor, 500 bucks to get up there, put wood down, put you know, one bundle of shingles, and that roof was handled. And we bought that home. I remember it. It was in Lapeer, Michigan. We bought it for 500 bucks, and I think we sold it for 13500 So $500 investment. I had a grand into it. I don't know. What would you guys do? <laughs> so um, that was, that, you know, so every condition of roof has to be addressed. So I, I, I just yeah, want to add a, a little bit more to and that. And another, another issue might be around a, uh, a skylight. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, where there's some leakage that's gone on. Pretty easy to patch up. Um, it, it looks a lot worse than it is sometimes. Yeah, you're yeah. looking at a home right now. Yeah. We're considering Absolutely. maybe buying, maybe passing, and um, it's a it's a it's a – a leak around um, a skylight right and once again you know you don't know what you don't know so until you check it out you're gonna have to repair that and it could be just a, a gold mine you know you just got to be asking yourself what am I what's my return what's my investment and then address it from there right so, um, so highlights and improvements are something I like to hear uh, sellers brag about yep I just put a new furnace in two mm -hmm. years ago I just replaced the hot water tank last you know six months ago I just put all new windows in, you know, uh, four years ago. Those are the kind of things we would like to listen for and hear uh, because that does increase, in our minds, the value of the home. And we like to compliment the seller on the, the, the nice up upgrades they did to their home. Right. Uh, and that will help right. us uh, make a decision on whether uh, that's a good investment or not. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, here, here's some examples. You'll get people you'll talk to. you say, what, what are some of the improvements you've had on your home? And they'll say, well, I put new carpet in three years ago. And, you know, that's, and I spent $2,000. Well, that was an improvement for them to enjoy, right? It doesn't really add any value to the home because it's three-year-old carpet. And it's got pets and everything else they've had. So it doesn't add a lot of value to right, us. Right. I mean, it's probably going to have to come out anyway. Or if they said, well, I painted it, you know, two years ago, but I've got all my, wind, you know, all my mirrors and pictures, there's a high probability it's going to need to get painted again. So those are the kind of things that, you know, it's nice to hear. It's nice you did that, but it really doesn't add value to the home for us to buy. But like you said, Dan, roofs, furnaces, hot water heaters, windows, um, new skirting sometimes. Um, Major components. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe new cabinets. Mm -hmm. We've had people put brand new kitchens in. That makes a difference. Right. So, yeah. Timeline. Um, well, the timeline. So what is your timeline to be out of the house? Because it's kind of critical. Because if we're going to invest in this, or you're going to, you want to know when you're going to have a, your home available to sell. So, uh, you know, some people will say, "Hey, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking at buying a home in the next six months, and all that." Well, you got to be careful because if you're going to invest your money, you're going to tie it up for six months. Do you want to do that? Um, in our case, we'll, you know, we might do that with a down payment, a low down payment, you know, maybe 500 to 1,000 bucks, and tie that home up. Get the title, put in your contract that you'll, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be paying it off later. Yeah. But if someone's going to say, 
um, I got an empty home and I want to be out of this thing by the weekend. You're you're driving over there with cash in hand and you're you're getting absolutely. I'm just going to say conversely, <laughs> if the home's already vacant and the next month's lot rent is staring the seller in the face, their motivation just went from you know here to yeah. there. So. Yep, exactly. You know. Uh, so ask about timeline. You know, and conversely, we talked about highlights. You want to ask people about defects because that's that it has to be one of those questions you have to tell people. Now, be honest with me because some people might give a little flowery comments to their home, right, Dan? They'll, All right. They might exaggerate a little bit. Well, my home is a it's – really, it's really pretty nice, you know, and I ask them to give it a, a star rating or a 1 to 10, and does it have, you know, pet smells? Does it have – you know this or that, and and I want I want them to paint the picture of what their home looks like, because I tell them, listen, you know, if I'm going to give you a range on the phone, it's 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 going to be part and partial to what you're telling me. So if you're not telling me the truth, and I show up, and I gave you a range between a thousand and three grand, and I show up, and it's really not what you said, it's not a thousand dollar, three thousand dollar home. I, it might be a title turn into me. So I want to just stress that that you know. Ask about the defects, um, broken windows, leaks, smells, like we said, um, things soft, like that. Soft floors. Yeah. Soft floors, yeah. yeah. So, odors, that's a big thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Pet odors, smoker's odors, yeah, those, are, those can be deal killers. They can, yeah. and we've made money at them. I remember one yeah. time you bought a home and you actually marketed it, and you said, smelly, stinky, cat-smelling home. On, and and my, phone, my phone blew up. <laughs> Your phone blew I up. that home in about 10 minutes. <laughs> exactly. So. Yeah. So, I mean, guys, there's always caveats to these, but they're extremes. You know, mm -hmm. we've been doing this for a combined 30 years together, uh, 1,400 plus homes. Um, but that's the kind of knowledge we're sharing with you. So we hope this has been helpful. Um, we look forward to seeing you at our next uh, session and we appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for watching Easy Homes University. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to see our future episodes.